Gordon, and this is my cookbook, the Eat a Bug cookbook. It originally came out in 1998, so I've basically been cooking with bugs for about 20 years. And it was revised and updated about three years ago. What gave you the idea? I was really curious why we don't eat bugs. You know, they say 80% of the world's cultures eat insects all around the world, but Europeans, Northern Europeans don't. And then, of course, they settled North America and brought their tastes with them. So I think the deal is that because they're, they're farmers, bugs are the enemy. Well, I, I was told that probably 80% uh, of the world eats bugs. Yeah, that's right. They say about 2 billion people. So those are, but a lot of those people have traditions that are like based in hunting and gathering. Correct. As opposed to farming. So if you're out in the jungle and you find things that are edible, you just grab it, right? If you're farming, you want only the one thing to grow and get rid of everything else. So bugs are now the enemy. Were you, uh, as a child, were you always interested in uh, insects? You know what? I actually grew up studying fish. <laughs> fish but, and but I like it all kinds of nature. I'm a, yeah. I'm a priest of nature, believe it or not. Yeah, yeah. And, um, I think I, when I wrote this book, I was feeling like people don't respect insects. In our own culture, they think they're gross. Ooh, get that away from me. Absolutely. And they're actually, if they, we did not have insects, the whole planet would shut down in like a matter of weeks. Because so many things depend on them. Can someone eat a cockroach? Can someone eat a cockroach? Oh yeah, absolutely. In China, they have factories where they raise cockroaches the same way these guys are raising crickets. They're uh, medicinal. Are they? Yeah, they say they're good for you. And, uh, in, what perp in what way? Well, I've done some writing about this. They actually use them for all sorts of things. Poultices, if you have a wound, you mash up cockroaches and put them on your wound. Or you can dry them and they prescribe them for different ailments and Chinese medicine. I could see that cockroaches will be, uh, they, they can survive a uh, nuclear blast. I mean, they have to have some sort of uh, properties. I think they have resistance to a lot of infections. Right. That's why they can live in these really crappy conditions. Right. So that's probably part of it right yeah. there. Yeah. I have to tell you though, I did a study about this. And the, the thing about the cockroaches can withstand the nuclear blast. It's like leftover from the you 50s sure. when we had little bombs. And now we can blow up everything. Okay. Yeah, right. I don't know if I agree with that statement. True, true. That's really old in my uh, perspective, definitely. And actually, I was writing a book about cockroaches, and I got into the fact that people use them for food and medicine in other parts of the world. And that started me interested in stuff that led to the writing of this book. What has been the most interesting insect for cooking that you've uh, uh, touched or uh, dealt with? Oh, well, I definitely think, I may put up my visual here. Absolutely. Tarantulas. Deep fried tarantula spiders. They're actually really delicious. Crunchy. You have to know how to prepare them. Less crunchy than other bugs because spiders actually have pliable body armor. Right. If you, they say if you have a pet tarantula and you drop it on the floor, it might bleed to death. Spring a leaf. Because they don't have that, it's not like a beetle that's like a pound on it. Right. So they're more chewy than crunchy. That's pretty why I like them. But also, you know, meat is basically muscle. Is it like a crab? You would yeah, say? it's like soft shell crab. I was thinking about the the comparison about the uh, Cretaceous um, sea creatures and and uh, and the insects. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, a long, long time ago, billions of years ago, in the oceans, you had scorpions that were like the size of this table. But believe it or not, the ones on land survived. So we have the little scorpions running around now. But they used to be sea food. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I was told the other day, uh, today, that the uh, lobsters were once thought to be uh, oh, disgusting creatures. Yeah, trash. lobsters, when the pilgrims landed at Plymouth Rock, they were like disgusted with how many lobsters there were. And they actually would use them as fertilizer. They'd plow them into the farm fields rather than eat them. Okay. So, yeah, and, then, and just over a time, even in the 1930s. Were the natives also, the Native Americans also uh, ambiguous with, yeah, I, I with, with lobsters? I don't know. 
I've never looked that up. But I do know that in Rhode Island, in the prisons, they actually passed the law that you can only serve lobster to prisoners a certain number of times a, a month. Because they used to be like trash. Here, eat this. That's lobster I had cost $50. Yeah. Well, expensive. I had to share it with two friends. Yeah, you know that, that in, uh, in Maine, McDonald's served lobster rolls. Yeah. But but getting back to your insects, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so so that that tarantula look look amazing. Um, what kind of dishes do you do you do with uh, with insects? Well, you know, I have this cookbook has forty recipes in it. And that tell me tell me a few of them, please. Well, that includes everything all the way from little guys, termites and ants, all the way up to through grasshoppers and all the way up to the big guys, the tarantulas and stuff. What do you consider the most uh, tasty of all the insects? I really like these things called wax worms. Now, they're little white caterpillars. If you go to the pet store, you can buy them as pet food. Um, but they say they're so fatty, you don't want to like give too many of them to your turtle or you get too fat. And they actually are, the, the reason they call them wax worms, they're caterpillars that grow up eating the wax of like a honeycomb in a beehive. So here's this animal that's only been eating beeswax and honey for its whole life. They taste really sweet. And if you roast them, like I have a recipe for white chocolate and wax worm cookies. Sweet. They taste like pistachios. No kidding. So I like them the best. Can you show me a book, please? Yeah. Here it is, the Eat a Bug cookbook. And somewhere in here, let me find the photo. Oh yeah, that was easy. White chocolate and wax worm cookies. I see it. It's and I incredible. Say like, I say like, if you, if I did the blindfold test, you definitely want a second one. These are great. What's in them? You know. Well, thank you so much for your time. I, I appreciate welcome. it. Tell me uh, your name. Carlos. Good to meet you. My, my pleasure.